Hello, my dear friends, and best greetings from Kyiv, the capital of Ukraine. My name is Viktor Fursov. I'm a research entomologist, beekeeper, and teacher. And this is my string translation just on telephone, on a smartphone, and just directly through the cable line. Well, today we have a very interesting topic for stream, for discussion, for questions from auditory and for, for translation. Computer is working, started to work. So it's translated on two different channels. So that's why you can watch it either on smartphone or on telephone or, or through your computer. On smartphone, it's also very convenient because people are traveling everywhere around now. And if people keep smartphone, okay, you can type your questions everywhere in the real world. Either you are just in Nepal or in South America, in Australia, New Zealand, or in Canada, in the United States, or in India. A lot of people from the United States watching my channel. The second part, and this is okay, part of the Arctic region, and also just India and some other countries. So that's why I'm talking in English language for this discussion, for this translation online, and which will be recorded and will be also on my channel. Today we will be talking about insects, insects in your house. So this is mostly my lecture because auditory is collecting very slowly, slowly, especially in Ukraine. This is evening time, so not so many people watch in YouTube. And most people now just moved to either to Instagram or TikTok for entertaining, for entertaining content, for entertaining video, just to watch bees, wasps, some poisonous, some venomous arthropods, which are biting, which are stinging. And this is funny for people. My channel is devoted to scientific research, to scientific observations, and partially for amateurs observation, for amateurs who can observe insects at home, in a courtyard, in a forest, in a park, just near your home, in village, well, maybe even in a big city, like I'm living in Kiev. This is a big city, more than two million yet people. How many years? More, more two thousand years old. Kiev city, the capital of Ukraine, and just a lot of people around. Not so many insects, by the way, around. But nevertheless, if you are observative, if you have attentive eyes, so you can watch for animals, for big animals like. Mammals, for birds, for fish if you are fishing, and you can observe some tiny arthropods, tiny insects which are crawling, which are jumping, which are flowing around, which are sitting and singing somewhere in trees, in shrubs in evening time, or sometimes flying between shrubs in a dark time, in a dark, darkling time. And also, <clears throat> you can observe for insects just at home, because at home you may keep domesticated insects, partially or fully domesticated insects, or you can keep <clears throat> insects which you bring from the nature, and you can think that they are domesticated, but originally they are just wild, <clears throat> but they are living at home like pets, like artificial pets. If you're keeping cat or dog, Cat or dog is domesticated animal. <clears throat> Only there are some wild dogs and wild cats, different species which are living in the wild areas or in a wildness. But insects, majority of them, they are not domesticated. Who are domesticated? Who is living for special purpose, for purpose of human beings? And this is mostly just one species. And this is a silk moth and Bombyx mori, family Bombycida, big Lepidoptera, so it's relatively big, about this size, white moth, which are producing silk for hundreds of years, for thousands of years in China, in India, in Japan. And now this can be also cultivated in different countries, naturally in Uzbekistan, in Afghanistan 
in Turkmenistan, Tajikistan, Kyrgyzia maybe, just for commercial purposes, for industrial purposes, for collecting silk from cocoons, cocoons of the silk moths. And also this species is domesticated because silk moth, the moth, the butterfly, cannot fly naturally. The silk moth lost ability to fly because this is an artificial selection of silk moth. And silk moth is producing silk. And now Japanese selectors, <coughs> genetics, geneticists, and Chinese geneticists trying to make better productivity of silk moths, bombix mori, making different coloration of silk of this cocoon, little bit whiter, little bit pink, little bit yellowish, with the, and also bigger cocoon. So bigger cocoon, better productivity, and even Jap Japanese geneticists achieved some very good results. So they increased the size of cocoon and also the weight of cocoons on one third part, more than 25%, and change different colors. But this is distant countries. Some people keep in silk moths just for fun as lepidopterists, as amateurs, as collectors and zookeepers for educational purposes and just for pleasure. <clears throat> and even I have some cocoons. I forgot to show you. I showed in some of my videos. One lepidopterist from Ukraine who is amateur and who is keeping moths and butterflies at home for educational and nature conservation purposes, for releasing moths in the nature, to increase the population in the nature. He kept also silk moth at home and will and he was trying to increase <coughs> to feed these caterpillars with a mulberry maybe two years ago. So he sent me some cocoons just for presentation during some exhibitions. Thank you very much, Oleg. If you are watching or you will be watching my me next time. Maybe we can make kind of a stream with you as well. So this is one species, silk moth, bombix mori, white, and a white tiny moth about this size, but very pleasant because she cannot escape. Easy to observe, easy to cultivate, easy to feed the caterpillars with mulberry leaves. Mulberry leaves are living uh, <coughs> plant just in some areas easily, not in the north, but in the south areas, even in Kiev, we have some mulberry trees. And another species, this is a honeybee. People say saying that honeybee is domesticated species. That's not very true. Just devoted beekeepers in Ukraine. I was keeping good and I'm keeping good connections with beekeepers in Ukraine. Are talking always, remember, honeybee is not domesticated species. They're always wild because they want to escape from my farm, uh, farming place, from my apiary. Always they're swarming and trying to escape. They're sitting for half an hour near my apiary, just saying goodbye to apiary. And if you missed this choice to collect it, the swarm during half an hour, swarm will be leaving the apiary in un the unknown direction, maybe to another trap of a neighbors or maybe to the forest or shrubs. Yes, one person has already wrote me that his friend is a giant spider, which is he is keeping it as a pet. Spiders, also possible to keep as a as a pet. Uh, but I finished my story about honeybees. So honeybees is partially, just a little bit domesticated because humans, the keepers, they provided for them artificial home, big hive, or many big hives. And they just created beekeeping te technology, how to take care about honeybees carefully, how to split colonies to prevent swarming, how to delete queen cells or queen larvae, just in 
appropriate in the correct appropriate time so how to keep the keeping technology in sophisticated way for not for scientific purpose but for commercial purpose because bee keepers are connect, collecting gathering all the honey from honeybees mostly all the honey because only some as i say devoted and creative and intelligent with some brain bee keepers were leaving some honey for honeybees for the overwintering period some commercial beekeepers are saying no problem about honey for honeybees we collect during the gathering time for yielding time all the honey from a beehive and then feeding honeybees with sugar syrup syrup so so that's why honeybees were producing again artificially artificial honey from keeping sugar from uh, sugar sugar syrup because they feeding sugar sugary syrup and they're just releasing it again to the cells they're producing kind of a honey but this quality of this honey is much lower and this kind of honey which will be collected by honeybees inside the cells is not so productive not so not doesn't have such such amount of beneficial content and beneficial vitamins and other contents and not so good for overwintering for honeybees so that's why honeybees will be dying regularly and a higher rate on the sugar in syrup sugary syrup so far so good there are some other bee bees as a wild bees some beekeepers who are keeping solitary bees like osmia megahila from a family megahilide of leaf cutter bees it's very popular to make bee hotels so they're collecting some refuge some stems or making some kind of a artificial woody nest and they're replicating one generation to another generation of leaf cutter bees with genus osmia and megahila for pollination purposes for commercial purposes because osmia bees and megahila bees are great pollinators of different flowers in springtime and different flowers in a greenhouse and they're not stingy they're not intended to sting because they're very peaceful wild bees and they're solitary because they don't have behavior for protection of their nest their nest is temporary just for one year queen of a solitary bee is creating many cells just for one season and then just dying and all larvae pupae and then adults they're just overwintering for the next season without attention of a initial queen so that's why some beekeepers are keeping osme bees osme like a like a wasp sounds osme solitary bee leaf cutter and mega killer bee bees for commercial purposes to sell them to greenhouses or to some agricultural organic farmers for pollination purposes and it's really great or some of them making it in their courtyards for nature conservation purposes for pollination of their backyard not a greenhouse but just apple trees pear trees plum trees mulberry trees everything just in a garden and it's really great so we really appreciate efforts of these amateurs of these great people who are keeping solitary bees in the courtyard some people keeping also spiders like pavel who wrote here in majority of people these giant spiders were not poisonous and were not biting humans just for no reason if you're just putting the finger between mandibles of a spider spider of course probably will bite you but in natural situation spider doesn't jump jump on the humans jump on on the people for biting it's, this is not a scorpion 
This is not a scorpion, which is just biting for self-protection. But I do not appreciate efforts of some keepers who are keeping. Uh, black widow, spiders, for instance, at home, at the laboratory for no reason, for not studying their behavior, for not studying their venom, or maybe parasitoids like this one. Uh, just for fun, but just for fun, keeping black widow. This is a extremely dangerous and unnecessary necessary behavior to keep venomous spiders at home or at the laboratory without scientific reason. And I'm just started directly the story about domesticated insects, about pets, and also I don't forget about pests. That sounds very funny in English. Pets and pests. Pets. These are animals or birds or fish which are very pleasant for humans. And pets, pests, pests, pests. These are dangerous and not pleasant, irritating creatures who are living in your house, in your warehouse, in your stock, in your kitchen, always just attracted from the nature sometimes. Majority of insects and majority of arthropods coming, coming to your house, coming to your kitchen, either from a balcony, either from a window, or from door from your courtyard because we attracted in the evening time with the light like this i'm just sitting in front of light so some butterflies coming but some are coming for instance for pheromone i have this pheromone plate for some pets pests some pets or some animals moth or fruit moth so they're coming just because here Pheromone. I cannot feel pheromone, but some other pets, pests like moths, they're feeling pheromones of females and they're flying from the window, from a balcony, from neighbors, don't forget about it, from neighbors in your big apartment house. They're coming inside your house because they're feeling pheromones of females of the same species, like some dangerous fur moth. Most they come in from neighbors, from their our house, from their stock, and they inf can infest your house. And I started to say about insects and arthropods, but don't forget that I am in Kiev, the capital of Ukraine, and situation in Ukraine is not so pleasant. I'm not so say controversial. There is no controversial situation. There is a country who is attacked by aggressors. An aggressor country, this is a Russian country, Russian Federation, which is greatly are not appreciated, but hatred country by all Ukrainians. I can say by the majority of Ukrainians, majority of Ukrainians, maybe 99% of Ukrainians are hating now Russian language and hating now also Russian state, Russian Federation state. This is Two years ago, we can say this is controversial question because just the war in Ukraine started nine years ago in 2014. But now the war is continuing more than 500 days as in a wild scale, wild scale level. Today we don't have and didn't have still some air attacks. So air defense system didn't make some sirens even in Kiev, but some sirens are always coming in evening time, in the morning time, in unexpected time, because this bloody country is a Russian Federation sending some bloody drones to Ukraine and Ukrainian military forces are protecting citizens of Ukraine, are protecting the land of Ukraine, and are protecting the state of Ukraine. And military forces of Ukraine are protecting the state of Ukraine, independence of Ukraine. So that's why we're making the joke. So one day maybe I can tell you the story about it as a review of this journal, because I have this journal which is named Ukraina, which is means state or country. So there are different issues. This journal is coming every one month. So next will be coming in the end of this month. 
this one once before this was in june time here the destruction this is a not visible picture because this is all the black and white journal is named Kraina. sounds like ukraine ukraine so a country or state and this is white and black picture of city of Bakhmut, which was completely destroyed demolished by a russian federation and one one journal is about nato russian federation is not satisfied about nato but more and more people in ukraine are becoming more and more satisfied in the name of nato and joining the nato so politicians will think about it they're thinking about it so but this is story for my next speeches maybe for next translations if you like this point i can tell you about these journals what is described in these journals because there are some hot news which are described not in internet but in a journal as a interview with witnesses in the front an interview with witnesses of the situation politicians scientists art workers ordinary people witnesses of brutality and it's published in this journal but coming back to our insects so if you want to, to support ukraine don't forget that ukraine is fighting for independent and if you want to support my channel you can support my channel as well i would say i can make my little drop for fighting against this stupid country as our neighbors yeah this is uh, some negative story sorry about it but this is a situation because some people are now talking about some subjects and do not pay attention to situation around but situation around is difficult in ukraine strange maybe people say in russia but very difficult in ukraine but where trust we are trusting to our military forces to our state and our country and we believe in the victory of ukraine support my channel and support ukraine if you are speaking in english and if you are understanding what i'm talking about if you, even you are in india in europe in australia in africa in south america in north america in united states in canada in mexico in brazil peru ecuador or maybe in south america or maybe in south africa and morocco or maybe in italy in england sweden norway tunis morocco china thailand indonesia Ma malaysia laos cambodia vietnam so support ukraine don't support these bloody countries russian federation why we are writing this name from the small letters russian federation a very small country forget about negative story support independence of ukraine stand with ukraine by the way and what about pests for pests in your house in your warehouse i show you them in this video which i am just starting to translate okay now i start translation of different interesting insects on my video file and i will be commenting and i'm adding to the stream video file well majority are at home maybe you will like collections collections of butterflies collections of beetles which is intended for educational purposes maybe just for pleasure and i'm showing now just this is collection of butterflies butterflies like this one this one butterflies my friend from 
sharing of region send me Alec, hello thank you very much he sent me this tiny small insect just for presentation for educational purposes and people collecting butterflies spreading their wings keeping them in such entomological boxes you need to keep them very carefully because there are a lot of pests tiny insects tiny beetles which are in, invading these these boxes entomological boxes and will eat your collection even this big one collection can be eaten and this is the second my video this is a wood lies i collected this wood lies just on the ground in the park near my house but also this this different two species wood lice can infest your washroom your bathroom some wet places in your garden in your courtyard they have no purpose to damage all your stock they're feeding by rotating plants they're feeding on rotate on rotating organic materials on rotating leaves on the ground so they're living underground inside of the soil and sometimes they're coming outside and they can eat leaves but this is also very good pets roly-poly roly-poly pets many people keeping them in terrariums just for pleasure because they easily rear it they're making good prolific population for instance this species was reared from maybe two pairs and i have this in my small terrarium this is a second species i just collected recently yes once uh, said if possible to send you some samples from canada yes of course possible to send some samples thank you very much i have my email in the description of this video and you can find my email which is named ufamcia gmail.com i have it i cannot show you immediately my written email probably not here anyway my email is ufancy.gmail.com and I can write you just my precise address. And you can find my address of my job, Institute of Zoology of National Academy of Science, is even on my YouTube channel. I'm working in the Scientific Research Institute, so that's why I'm not a hidden person, so I'm just open for public, for discussion, for collaboration, for connections. And if you can find, you have found some calcid wasps like this one, this is a really great idea. This is a great idea. We can study them under the microscope, maybe some new species, maybe some dis new distribution. Ah, okay, and I understood who is writing about it. One of my sus subscriber who just visited Canada for a certain period of time. You know my e email. And I'm showing on my video, just on computer, also just two different ants. And they're feeding each other. And this process is named trophallaxis. Trophallaxis. People collect ants in formicariums, in formicariums. Now they're becoming kind of domesticated insects. Of course, they are not, not domesticated. Many of them just in invasive species were penetrating just the borders of your house and trying to steal something. But humans, they created kind of terrariums, which are named formicariums, just for careful observations. Because ants, they are insects, they are not solitary. They have good organization. And it's quite interesting to observe for their behavior like that, how they share food, how they're breeding their larvae, how they 
breeding the larvae whole queen from eggs till the larvae pupae and pupation and just how they sometimes even swarming inside formicarium or in just separarium. So observation for ants is quite entertaining, entertaining. And there are some species which are bigger, have a bigger size. I'm not sure this is Camponotus, probably Camponotus species. And they have a bigger size, more than five millimeter size. Bigger size, queen is a bigger size, have a, has a bigger size. It's quite pleasant and surprising and to follow ants in captivity. In captivity, definitely this is not natural nest. And here, just on screen, on computer, I show fruit flies of a genus Drosophila, family Drosophilidae. Drosophilidae. Some myrmecologists, others who are keeping ants, keeping also Drosophila flies to feed with Drosophila the ants as a food because Drosophila is easily can be easily bred on fruits, like on the skin of bananas, on some rotating apples. And then you can freeze apple, apple flies just in a refrigerator by dying quickly. So you can take them off and feed the colony of your ants easily with such organic, you say, very natural way with flies from your culture. Cultivate them, so and then proliferate in a closed jar like here. This is a closed jar for from a cream with a closed transparent lid so that the flies, or fruit flies, drosophila cannot escape. So that's why they are just proliferating inside. This species is also very common and very well known. On screen, you see fire, fire, fire bugs, fire bugs, very, very common bugs which appear in it springtime and who are proliferating becoming very common in not in autumn in the middle summer like now okay my subscriber wrote some messages on telephone and this fire firebugs in latin name pyrochoris apterus you can easily keep them at home as a pet because they're not biting, they're feeding just on plants, on seeds. Like here, I put some malva, malva seeds, and these bugs, they're not biting. They have just special mouth apparatus, plants, and you can absorb it easily for them. And also, they lay eggs in captivity easily. Here is not visible, but I will show you separately. This is also some seeds, some fruits of robinia, so we can feed on fresh, fresh fruits or fresh seeds very easily. And of course, if you collected males and females, they are mating in captivity in your jar, and they are producing it after that very quickly, well visible white color eggs about one millimeter size, they're quite big. And then you will see very tiny young instars just hatched first generation of this hemimetabola insects, fire bugs, fire bugs, pyrochoris apterus, or gendarm bugs, gendarm bugs, because they have such wide, such bright red colors. Children enjoy them very much. Scientists do like firebugs very well because they're breeding easily. It's easy to study them uh, for different purposes like chemical resistance, insecticide resistance, because you can have a colony in laboratory and you can test different insecticides on your cultivated culture and they're completely not biting, not stinging, completely not dangerous. Absolutely. And this is collected in springtime. So that's why you see 
white flowers of a plum on screen. So we're just crawling around and feeding a little bit on some buds, on some stems, on some leaves. And these are two male and female. Very difficult to differentiate them. Some people asking how to differentiate male and female of firebug. Usually female is a bigger and male is smaller. And female is a thicker, is bigger. And male has a kind of a male up genitalia, male apparatus when we're just disconnected. But and also female is bigger, so she's crawling and keeping the male together with the female. Such a fun, funny tandem, like you can observe it in a dragonflies, for instance. And so you can recognize here how easily possible to keep them in captivity if you collected just a part of a population. You don't need them, you can always release them anywhere near your house because they're not dangerous at all. They're not damaging your plants, or at least the level of damage some plants is completely very, very low. They are not feeding on your plants in your courtyard, in your garden. They are feeding on some seeds which have fallen down on the ground usually, or just near the linen tree, which is not cultivated. OK, and this is praying mantis. Praying mantis on screen. Brain mantis, the name mantis religio, religiosa. Mantis is also very common insect for breeding purposes. People do like very much brain mantis to keep at home as a pet because the observation for this insect is really pleasant, very interesting. It's really great to observe how brain mantis cleaning its legs, especially the first pair of legs which has predaceous legs because mantis is taking the prey with his, with his first pair of legs. And this is a female, just a bigger one. And it needs to clean the legs carefully. This is a process is named grooming behavior. Grooming behavior. And these are beetles. These are beetles collected just on the ground near my house. We are belonging to a family of a ground beetles, family Carabidae, Carabidae. Some Carabidae are predaceous, some are phytophagos, some have a mixed feeding behavior, so quite easy to keep them in laboratory or at home for observation purposes because they're quite interesting. They have such a strong mandibles, mandibles. Some of them on snails, some prey on other insects, on larvae, and the entomagos insects. They have a very great impact on different pests in your garden, in your orchard. So they're beneficial insects. Some of them were feeding on plants. So like here, we're trying to cut some plants to feed on plants. And of course, if we're just entomophagos, predaceous, so we can each eat each other. So we're feeding on bigger species, can feed on a smaller species or smaller specimen. So that's why you need to keep them either on substrate with a good amount of food, so we will not attack each other because of the excess of food. Others, some bigger specimens will eat specimens. adults. So adults as a predators, as such a predaceous wolves will feed on other smaller species of ground beetles. And quite interesting to observe them in captivity. How do they make a behavior? Here there are some small aphids, small aphids on leaves. So we're eating some insects. I have two translations on screen on 
can on I have a translation on my telephone. So here I cannot show translation as I do in second part of translation on computer. So if you just download, if you are just going on my channel so from, mm, from editor part or how to say on my home page of my on the home page of my uh, YouTube channel on my home page YouTube, I have translation with videos. And here this is a direct translation just from home on telephone. Here I cannot show my video. Video is going on computer. So these two types of translation because I cannot show screen on telephone. I show screen with downloaded video just on my computer. And on my computer, I show a lottery beetle of a family, a lottery of clicking, clicking beetle, click beetles, click beetles. You put click beetle on your palm. So click beetle is jumping, jumping. That's why this beetle is called click beetles. So check my home page of my YouTube channel and you will find the second second edition of my translation. And now I show you some home pests, home pests of a family, Curculanidae or weasels. And this is a rice weasel, which infested different, a lot of seeds of wheat. Yes, and we're just escaping because we we eat it now. Just we're emerging from seeds and crawling, crawling on the jar, and then just re spreading everywhere around, searching for new food in your warehouse, in your store. So that's why such a curculanid beetle. So weasels are very dangerous, very dangerous because they can infest hidden stock of your food, hidden seeds, hidden bread, hidden cakes, or some pasta. You can eat some dry bread, dry, dry cakes, not only seeds of wheat and other cereals. So and it can make huge damage for seeds and even for some bread products as well. So you see they're crawling, they're crawling on light. Some of them just escaping, flying away just outside to the street, to through your window. Or some of them were coming inside in a dark place, a dark place searching for new food. So that's why we are dangerous because we can search for new food in your house, like, like here. We were crawling, crawling, making a group making this kind of a social activity. We're very surprised by fresh air. Some of them just fallen down, but some of them escaping because this species, Cytophilus oryza, this species has wings. So that's why males and females were escaping the jar with already eaten food and they're just infesting new food somewhere in a stock and a new warehouse, they can feed also on acorns, or you see here, one small specimen was flying, or you can feed also in the nature on acorns, or maybe on some, we we'll feed them also with acorns collected in the nature, so we were eating it very well. And here, this is a head of a species which are easily easily domesticated, easily keeping in the culture. And this is Tinea brianida beetle, Zophobus atratus, Zophobus, and this is female with a, with a flattened part of a head. You see, this is a female. So that's why you may have females, males in your culture, so you can remember this head with for female, and this is a male with a circular cutting edge on the head. 
it is just a male. So usually a number of males more than females. So, but it's not a problem. Only the problem that some males can be bigger, some are smaller. So the bigger can destroy the smallest. They cut the antenna, cut the legs because of such kind of a competition. Yeah, and we have a strong mandibles. And this is a grasshopper, green grasshopper, which is collected just on, in the bush, or just with. Oh no no no! I didn't collect in a bush. I collected it on my balcony. On my balcony, this grasshopper just flew inside my balcony. And started to sing. I, I found singing grasshopper on my balcony in midnight time. So that's why I cut it for presentation. This nice, beautiful artist in my video. And this is a male because of this. He has tooth. I have it not visible here but because male doesn't have ovipositor. And male has no stick, long stick on the top of the body, has no tail, but only has a kind of a male genitalia. And of course, jumping very well, but you cannot escape from the object especially if you want to show your subject for your audience. If it, oh, oh yes, you see here <clears throat> on the right side, this is top of the abdomen and top of abdomen without ovip, <coughs> has no ovipositor. Any, I, I fed this grasshopper with some leaves but in many cases, grasshoppers have a mixed behavior. You can feed them either on leaves or they're just predaceous. But this species was not predaceous. Yes, I guess so. This was the last insect in this video. Yes. Okay, so you can keep also grasshoppers as a home pet just for observation, but don't forget that the home pet grasshopper is living just very short period of time, maybe 10 days, maybe two weeks, at least two, two weeks. So this is a lot of time for a grasshopper of uh, different size. Smaller grasshopper, big grasshoppers, but we are feeding either on plants or they're predaceous, you need to feed them with some and other insects. Maybe smaller crickets, easy to keep bush crickets outside of your house. You keep them inside the jar, inside terrariums. But bush cricket also partially predaceous. If you keep several crickets inside your terrarium, one cricket will be feeding on another cricket and another will be feeding on the next one and your population will be decreasing. So you need to give them excess of food and make kind of a refuges inside terrarium so they will hide somewhere and we will, will not connect very often between them to avoid such a destructive behavior as a feeding on each other inside your terrarium. But about indoor insects or indoor pests, which are infesting your stock, infesting your kitchen, infesting your bathroom, toilet, balcony, living room or kitchen, or just corridor, or warehouse. This is a long story. For that, I can use this book as an Irish indoor insect, which I got from my colleague, Dr. O'Connor from Ireland. And here this is a description, definitely in English about life cycles of different indoor insects. Most of them were pests, pests, indoor pests of different products. Or we're just maybe a little bit irritating. But for that, we will be making new video, new video stream, maybe next week, next Monday. 
So follow my channel, follow my advertisement on my channel, and don't forget, press like, subscribe, and write your comments. And don't forget to visit my Patreon page for donations. Donate me, donate to Ukraine, support Ukrainian army, so support Ukrainian science. We will fight, support independence of Ukraine. Ukraine is forever. Ukraine is forever. Ukraine will win. Thank you for watching. You can write separate comments under this video after finishing of this video. Thank you for observation. Good luck. See you soon on my channel. Okay, finish translation. Visit my Patreon page. Thank you for your observations. Good luck. See you soon. Write your comments in different language, in Ukrainian, Russian, in English, or in French. I have a Google Translator. I have a Google Translator to make translation. Thank you very much. See you soon on my channel. A subscriber or just visitor. I hope you have been entertained a little bit with my story and with my video. This is my original video from different insects in different time under the microscope or just directly in terrarium. Thank you for coming. Good luck. See you soon on my channel.